Good morning. So this morning, uh, I found something in Luke, chapter eighteen, verses uh, thirty-one through thirty-four. Then, uh, <clears throat> then he took the twelve aside and said to them, "Behold." We are going up to Jerusalem, and all things which are written through the prophets about the Son of Man will be accomplished. For he will be handed over to the Gentiles, and will be mocked, and mistreated, and spit upon. And after they have scourged him, they will kill him. And the third day he will rise again. But the disciples understood none of these things. And the meaning of the of his statement was hidden from them, and they did not comprehend the things that were said. So, I read this. Of course, we know because this is this is history to us. But we know that Jesus was telling his twelve disciples about what was going to take place. That. Uh, <clears throat> When they get to Jerusalem, he was he was going to be uh, arrested, beaten, spit upon. They were going to make fun of him, uh, and then they were going to scourge him, which you know, which is the cattails, you know, hitting him with a with a with a whip that had like metal chunks in it that would rip your flesh out. Uh, killed, you know, of course we know crucify is the way that he was going to be able, but he was going to be killed and then he told them but on the third day he was going to rise again um, and and all of this stuff, the prophets has prophesied uh, about, you know, Isaiah is littered with with uh, the prophecy of Jesus Christ and, and his and his crucifixion and resurrection. I mean. Um, I mean you can go back all the way to Genesis. When God told Eve that. You know. The, her seed will be the one that. Pro, that will produce. Salvation. You know. For us. Not Adam's. Eve's. Um, but, and then you see that the 12, his, his 12 disciples could understand what Jesus was saying about himself. And to me, I don't think it's because they were disobedient um, or sinful, I think it's just like state of fact that it says that it was hidden from them. God did not want them to understand yet. Um, God did not want them to realize what was going on, what Jesus was telling them was about to happen um, until after it's already happened. And then as soon as Jesus had sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, um, actually take it back, not, not on the day of Pentecost, sorry. But when Jesus actually rose and ascended, I think, it's when it, it hit them, what Jesus was trying to tell them back then. Um, point being is, sometimes God will hide things from us, um, so uh, that we don't understand what he's trying to tell us, and, and it's because it's all about his timing. I mean, there's some things that he'll, he'll, will eventually reveal to us in, in the right, perfect timing of his planning. 
and there may be some things that we're not going to understand at all. Uh, but um, we just have to have faith and know that whatever God is doing is for our betterment, is for our good. Because uh, he's not going to want to, he doesn't want to do anything to hurt us. Everything that he does, he does because he wants us to be close to him. <clears throat> and in like the case of the apostles here, at the time that Jesus told them what was fixing to happen to them when they hit Jerusalem, to him just specifically, they, they couldn't grasp. Despite of all the knowledge of all the prophecies that the prophets has, had foretold of this, of this day, um, for whatever reason, God had hid the understanding of what Jesus was telling them from them. <clears throat> and, and it's and you know, as a modern man today, and I and and I admit to this too. Sometimes I'll read things like this. I'm like, "What are they crazy?" But then, then this right here helps me to uh, allow the Holy Spirit to say, "Hey, remember, you have an advantage over over my twelve back then. Back then." I, you know, back then, you know, Jesus wasn't crucified. He wasn't arrested. He wasn't even arrested yet. They haven't even made it to Jerusalem yet. You know, so all this stuff was their future. Not our past. It was their future. And... <clears throat> Unlike the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, their hearts were just hardened. They know that they know all the prophecies inside and out, but they refused. They absolutely refused that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. Why? I think it's because when they interpret the scriptures they way the, the way they that they wanted to they wanted Jesus Christ to be some warrior king that was going to wipe out the Roman Empire and wipe out all their enemies they were expecting you know they their expectations of Jesus Christ was not somebody who was going to be meek kind and gentle um, catering to the uh, dregs, if you will, of society. You know, shepherds, harlots, tax collectors. You know, what they deemed as sinners. Because the Pharisees, Sadducees, and Scribes, they never, never saw themselves as being sinners. They saw themselves as being the perfect embodiment of what the law of Moses um, wanted them to be. <coughs> Ergo, their hearts are hardened. So, God didn't have to hide things or meanings or understandings from them because... They've already closed that door themselves. They actually, they refused to believe what they were seeing in Jesus Christ with Scripture. Because Jesus Christ did not fit their idea of what a Messiah was. Um, but these 12 disciples, they did believe that Jesus was the Son of Man. I'm sorry, that Jesus was the Son of God. Um... Uh, and that he was the Messiah. They just could not understand and grasp the concept that how badly, how badly and how severely 
he was going to be treated, much less the fact that he, he was telling them, I'm going to die. But on the third day, I will rise from the grave. They just, it wasn't because they didn't believe it. It's just that God had hidden it from them. Um, so, my, my feeling would be so that the understanding came after what uh, all this passes. Because I think the moment that they saw him after his resurrection, everything clicked. And then once the Holy Spirit was sent to them on the Pentecost, it definitely locked in. And then that's when you start seeing the church growing in Acts. But anyways, uh, I hope you have a good day. Have a blessed day. I love you guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.